available tools for small RNA-seq data analysis do not allow the identification of isomers and often require advanced knowledge of bioinformatics. To overcome this, we have developed Isomere Window, a platform that supports, supports the systematic identification, quantification, and functional exploration of isomere expression in small RNA-seq datasets. And it's accessible to users with no computational skills. The tool is deployed in a virtual machine and it's accessible through a web browser. The user may select two analysis modules. Here in this uh, slide, you can see what is the, the home page of the, of the tool. So you have one button to start the module of annotation analysis and you have another button to start the module of functional analysis. You have further another field which allows you to review previous analysis because every time that you make a session it creates a session ID that it's unique. So once you come here and you insert your session ID you can review past analysis. The annotation analysis module allows to automatically perform read alignment, annotation of small node coding RNAs, prediction of novel microRNAs, identification of isomeres, differential expression of isomeres, and optionally, it starts the functional analysis automatically. The functional analysis module performs automatically isomere target prediction and functional analysis of isomere targets. Once the user presses and one of the modules, so presses the button and selects one of the modules, it's directed to an annotation analysis configuration or to a functional analysis configuration. In this web view, the user may define which are the, the parameters for all the analysis. But here, how can we, can, you can see in this blue box, the user is constrained to the analysis and comparison of two experimental conditions. But the Azimir pipeline can be used in standalone mode for any experimental setup. So the pipeline itself allows to perform several tasks. So it has encoded several functions that allow to perform automatically alignment, non-coding RNA annotation, isomer identification, normalization, isomer selection, and so on. And for isomer identification and quantification, it has encoded a novel algorithm that allows to detect all types of isomers and all its possible fuzzy combinations in a mode that is highly sensitive and specific, specifically, which means that a read that is derived from one microRNA, it, it will really be identified as a variant of that same microRNA. And our new aim is to port this pipeline into Nextflow. I would like to thank my co-authors and all previous members of the Isomir Window Project. I will be glad to receive any suggestions or questions now. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Andrea, for this presentation. Really interesting. Are there any questions? Please use the chat box, raise the hand, or open the mic. So, I don't see anything. So maybe, uh, maybe I can ask uh, uh, Andrea just. Uh, uh, so, have you uh, started considering uh, ways of um, 
uh, uh, including automated benchmarking in, in your pipeline and, and ways of monitoring accuracy as, uh, as, uh, as uh, development keeps going. Is there, do you have any idea how, how this will be achieved? So um, I have started. Um, um, I, ha I have generated uh, a simulated. Uh, that's why I, I, I was talking about the, the specificity. And uh, I have a, I have used R to to generate uh, to simulate data um, uh, from uh, try to simulate uh, try simulated small RNA seq data sets in a way that. Uh, we would have transcripts from the different regions of, of the precursor and with a higher uh, uh, read depth um, on the regions where we should have uh, the transcription of, of, the, of the microRNA of, of to the 5P or the, to the 3P. And, um, and that's why I, I, I mentioned that I, I, we could, I could measure the specificity. So what happens is that the, the pipeline is highly depending on from the alignment. So as we have discussed before, uh, Cedric, so what I saw is that uh, if the read is aligned correctly, so then the algorithm is able to assign correctly uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the isoform to the correct microRNA. But what happens is that for about 4% of these, the reads are not mapply, mapped in the correct position. So what happens is that because there are some, some are smaller than, for example, the isomeres which have uh, deletions which are smaller than, they are mostly sometimes assigned to uh, a very similar macroRNA that is from kind of the same family. Imagine a 7A is, can be assigned to a 7C and it's assigned wrongly and, and, and then of course, then it's kind of what probably explains why sometimes when people go to uh, um, to quant, you find differences uh, that are statistically significant, and then you try to quantify uh, to validate them by quantitative PCR, and they are not there because they have been quantified wrongly because of the wrong mapping. Right, right. That's very interesting. Uh, I think there is, uh, I don't know if you're keeping an eye on the chat. There is a question. Yeah, I do. <laughs> okay, so you, you may want, there, there is a question from Kylie. You, you, you saw it, no? Daniel? Yeah, I, ah. it's, uh, Kylie Manyard asked, um, what species does that actually work with your web page or your method? Uh, oh, it's, uh, so we have databases for many species. So uh, in the, um, I, I can share in the Slack, what is, what is the, uh, the the websites where you can have the 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 VM and then for that from there you can just download it. So we have so for all livestock species, uh, we have all the databases prepared uh, for all livestock species, for several model species, for for human, and then and for plants. So rather broad. Yeah, yeah, it's right broad. I think we have now about like twenty species in total. Okay. So I have still a short question. I think we have still time for that. Um, in the spirit of the previous talk, um, do you have an API for your web page, or is it only with clicking and uploading? Or I, I couldn't understand that. Okay, so the um, so if you want to use it as the, the the VM and just install the VM, which is very easy, and then just uh, work through the web browser where you're strict to the so you just download the VM. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, and all it's there. But we also have a GitHub page where you have the, the pro, uh, where we have the code, which is what happens is the VM is that the, um, the tool has two layers, has one, uh, has one, one uh, Laravel based uh, layer, which is the one that, um, that controls everything from the web browser. So what happens is that you have a structure, a PHP structure that, uh, um, talks with the, with, the, with the pipeline and the same way that NetFlow uh, talks with the, with the scripts inside, okay? So, but this is one way that if you don't know anything about informatics, it just uh, allows you to establish the parameters and, and, and just uh, do that. Um, and, and in the GitHub, you can just get all the, all the scripts that are behind 
uh, the VM and you just uh, work on your uh, command line or uh, the idea would be now to uh, kind of create a next flow uh, uh, version of it because you can just import it and and to be able to on the GitHub already to to provide the uh, a next flow uh, workflow for 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 that. Yeah, thanks. Maybe in the interest of time, just a really short answer to Frida's questions. Um, do you compare the output to your um, pipeline with MiaDeep2 output? MiaDeep2, oh, so for the inside, so the pipeline is a wrapper of different tools. It has about 13 tools. The, the no novelty of that, the, the new algorithm, it's for the isomere uh, identification. So for microRNA prediction, it uses MirDeep2 for, for animals and it uses MirDeep P for plants. And um, it's already, uh, um, it has programmed several filters for the output of MirDeep2. You can't, well, at least you shouldn't uh, uh, believe everything that MirDeep2 outputs. Um, and uh, so what happens is that uh, we have created some filters based on this on the scores of mu deep two, and uh, and so you 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 see that and if you and if you select you can choose to um, um, for the novel macroRNAs that are that are discovered to be included in the annotation of the species and then in the end of the analysis you also have you have you also can see and quantify the isomeres of these novel macroRNAs. Okay, so thanks. But I'm, I'm afraid that we run a bit out of time. <laughs> okay, good. Let's move on. <laughs> really? yeah. Thank you for the other... questions. <laughs> the, the rooms will be open in the lunch break. So I think we listen now to the presentation from Gabriel Moreira from University of Liege. And he's talking about functional and structural genomics annotation. And after that, we go on straight away to the next speaker. I will introduce him then as well. And Questions addressed to Gabriel can be later. Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Gabriel Moreira, postdoc in Giga University of Liège. And today I'm going to talk a little bit more about the protocols and pipelines that we are intended to use on work package two the functional and structural genomics annotation as part of both REG project. In this work package, the main goal is to do the map of functionally active regulatory elements and of structural elements in the bovine genome. We are gonna have new bovine cell lines in both REG, and we already have a catalog of 24 tissues collected from six animals, two from Canada, two from Germany, and two from Belgium, both sexes, three different breeds crossings, and kept in different environments. And we are gonna use this collection of tissues and cell lines to select some candidate regulatory variants affecting complex both reg traits, target traits, and also to have a list of variants to be validated in both reg and use it to establish biology driving genomic prediction tools. We in both reg we have mailing some tasks in work package two. And the first one is to do transcriptome analysis, in, uh, which comprise total RNA, mRNA, and small RNA. For total RNA, we have already 132 samples, which means six animals, 24 tissues from each animal. We use a true six-stranded total RNA kit from Illumina to do the library construction. And we did the sequencing pair and 150 base pairs. And I'm analyzing right now using NFCore RNA-seq pipeline already available. For mRNA, we have exactly the same samples we did the library using true six-stranded mRNA kit from Illumina. We did the sequencing pair and 150 base pairs. And I'm also using the same pipeline from NFCore, next flow, 
to analyze this data right now. For small RNA data, we have also the same samples. We use the Kyasec microRNA kit from Kyogen to do the libraries. And we did the sequencing single end for 50, animal, for 50 base pairs for a few animals and 100 base pairs for the other part of the animals. I'm using the, pro, the pipeline from NF4, small RNA seq to do the initial analysis. In the near future, if available, we can also use the eyes on me window. That is a pipeline that is being moved to next flow by Andrea Amaral is a pipeline from her. And she's also presenting on the meeting. So in the near future, we can also use this one to do the analysis for small RNA seq data from both rags. We also intended to do analysis of regulatory regions in the other task from work package two, which comprise a tech seq and chip seq. For a tech seq, we have exactly the same number of samples. We didn't start it yet, but we are gonna use an optimized protocol from the lab that is working for other samples that we already tried on the lab. We did a trial and it's working quite well. And we are planning to use NF4 a taxi pipeline. We are working and on some trials using the pipeline that we already have in the lab. And after that, we are planning to check if it's compatible and it's possible to use this one that is already available or if we have to do some edits and changes. For ChipSeq, we have also the same samples. We are gonna do five antibodies four stone markers and one CTCF from the Azure node. Also using the standard protocol from the Azure node, we did a trial in the lab using some samples that we have here and the standard protocol worked better than chipmentation. So we decided to proceed with standard protocol. And we are also planning to use the ChipSeq pipeline available in NF4 but it's important to highlight here, as I mentioned before, that I'm showing the pipelines that we are planning to use. Few of those we are already implementing and it's working quite well, but for the other ones, we're still running some tests and checking if it will be possible to adopt to these ones or if we have to establish new ones or do some edits and changes. We also have to do the step, we also intended to do the establishment of full map of mobile genetic elements in work package two. This step has established custom pipeline that was established in the lab a few years ago and have been used by Li Jin Tang, that is a PhD student in our lab. And now Menu Bati from ETH is collaborating and running this pipeline to identify mobile genetic elements and some Swiss cattle breeds, but I will not explain uh, more about this pipeline because Minu is also presenting during the training. So if you have any questions about the detection, you can go to her presentation and contact her. But for the moment, we are not intended to move this pipeline to next flow. Here I have all the partners from Work Package 2. If you have any questions or if you wanted to contact me, here it has my email available. Thank you very much. All right, so it's a pity that Gabriel isn't here to take any questions, but uh, um, my understanding he will be back later today also. So. I encourage you, if you have any questions, to approach him directly, then maybe in some of the coffee breakout session rooms. And because of that, we go now to the third and last speaker of the morning session, uh, Tuan Nguyen. I hope that's pronounced correctly. He's yes, from... you're, you're good. good. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> good, good. Good. Thank you very much. So, and he's from Agriculture Victoria. I suppose you are already on a really late time, so we shouldn't waste any time and go on that you can head for 
yeah, for the evening program. Tuan talks about uh, um, large scale sequence level imputation for dairy industry. And first we check his video and then he's open for discussion. Hello everyone, my name is Tung Wing. I'm currently a computational biologist at Agriculture Victoria, Australia, researching dairy cattle genomics. I'm very grateful for the organizer for inviting me to have a flash talk about automated pipeline for importation from custom SNP chip to sequence level. First of all, let's have a little bit of uh, background behind my study. So uh, these days, a lot of downstream analysis, for example, in this case, is a genome-wide associated study required good genotyping results. Although sequencing technology has been evolved dramatically during the last few years and uh, sequencing costs has been dropped out a lot, they're quite still uh, very expensive. So here in Agri Agriculture Victoria, we're dealing with 10,000 to even 100,000 of animals for every uh, research study, which renders sequencing quite impossible. So we're relying a lot on SNP array so uh, genotyping SNPs that have 3,000, 10,000, or even 50,000 SNPs on it. And then we rely in on a technique called imputation, which is basically fills in the data. So you bring a SNP chip from 10,000 to 30 million SNPs at sequence level. So in this slide, I just wanna quickly mentioned two recent paper from our group where we use multi or mixed data from RNA sequencing, chipsic data and phenotypic data to create what, uh, what we call an XT50K SNP chip. Uh, consists of a lot of informative variants that we think are very beneficial for the dairy industry. However, imputation from a SNP chip to sequence, a customized SNP chip to sequence level, it's quite problematic. So uh, here is a quick diagram, which I'm not gonna talk a lot due to the restricted time frame for this presentation, but eventually you can only go from one level at a time. So for example, here you have an XT50K SNP chip. If you wanna bring it to the next level standard SNP chip called the Bovin standard 50K SNP, you have to break that down into two parts. One part is the non-overlap bits of the XT50K and the 50K. And the other part is the overlap of XT50K and 50K. You only use this bit to bring it to the, the standard 50K SNP chip whereas you have to keep this bits intact because it's already it's a true genotyping data and you have to merge them later down the track. So you, again, you do it one more step from the 50K step to the HD step. And then at the very end, you have to combine everything together. So it's a, again, it's a, it's a take home message that it's a very fiddly business. Once, uh, after you got into this stage, what you have to do next is you have to take this HD data and you have to phase it. So uh, haplotype phasing, it's a statistical estimation to bring it from genotype data to haplotype data. And only after phasing, you can then bring everything to the sequence level at 30 million uh, variants, and then plug it to your favorite GWAS pipeline to generate the Manhattan plot and analyze a uh, genome-wide associated study. So uh, by enrolling in this course, um, what I anticipate to get out from it. So I want to implement, implement workflows for sequence imputation because from our end, we have one custom SNP chip, but because we collaborate with a lot of uh, different agency around the world and they have their own customized SNP chips. So we would like to create a workflow that can unify everything. And basically if I receive a customized SNP chip from another agency, I can basically plug it into my workflow and then analyze the data without having to worry that I, I may make a serious mistake during the manual creation itself. 
The second point is that because each of the steps that I mentioned previously will be using by one particular software, and it will, there are a lot of software for one particular purpose. So we would like to have an empirical testing for these uh, software every few years. So let's say from today, we use a suite of software, but two years from now, we will learn to uh, rerun the workflow again to see if any other software have a better will have a better result and will change to another software. Uh, for the cattle, the genome is quite sophisticated at the moment, but they keep getting out new genomes that better address uh, several features. So for example, in bovine industry, one of the problems is that the X and Y chromosome are not particularly good at the moment. So I guess in the next few years, a lot of impro improvement can be made. So we would like to change from one genome assembly to another and workflow may be very helpful in it. And uh, one important part is that nowadays there are, implement uh, there are new texts created daily. So uh, one particular example is the ultra long read by uh, nanopore technology or pack biotechnology, which are very interesting at the moment. And we would like to implement workflows where we can plug and play those models in if we have su successful funding to afford it. And of course, the, one of the very important part is that we want to uh, do reproducible science. And that brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you for your listening. Thanks a lot, Tuan, for the really nice presentation as well. Um, I think I'm frozen, or I'm not sure. Uh, we, we, we can hear you, and we can... Oh, we can... okay, it's just yes. my picture up there, my preview picture is frozen, sorry. So I see there's already a question from Andrea. Hi, uh, thanks, Juan. Yes. Uh, Really nice presentation. What what is the so um, I really liked that the slide where you showed all the steps and what what was overlapping with what, and uh, how many uh, snips are not overlapping between the XT fifty and the fifty k. So the uh, so the XT fifty k that we currently have got around forty six thousand snips mm -hmm. and eventually only seven thousand overlap with the standard fifty k. So, so then that, you lose a lot of information. Yeah, lo yeah. So technically, we're not losing, but we just took the overlap into that to the fifty k, and while keeping the the non overlap bit, and we squeeze that in later. Yeah. Okay. So we're not so we're not, not technically losing that. Okay, so you're not losing yeah. that. You just using no, the not. other part yeah. for the imputation, and then you put them all That's together. That's correct. Okay. Thanks. That's correct. At the very last last step, yes. Okay. Thanks. Oh, good. Are there other questions? I have still a question. You mentioned that you were um, interested in using also ultra long reads inside your data analysis workflow and imputation workflow. So do yes. you have any experiences how um, the error rate from long reads affects that? Is that a problem? Uh, one, one of the reasons, the variant, we, hmm? yeah, one of, yeah, that's correct. Um, the, the error rate was a bit problematic in the past, but we were kind of very keen on looking at the ultra long read with the recent new earlier this year that Nanopore, I think they uh, they were uh, debuting a new uh, algorithm or something like that, that fixed the, that, that greatly addressed the error rate kind of thing. I think it brings up to 99 point something percent from a very badly uh, numbers previously. I think the, the algorithm called Bonito or something like that. Can't, can't remember precisely, but yes. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why we are interested in the, the implementation of ultra long read. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is not yeah. feasible to use actually already for for these approaches. Yeah, yes, uh, probably. We, we haven't actually test out that way. That like the, uh, the, the sequencing was, wasn't done yet due to the COVID situation. And uh, mm. yeah, so it's, <laughs> it's a bit tricky with the, this time of the year. But yes, it's yeah, something in the future. Mm -hmm. Would be interesting to see how it turns out. Sure. 
Is there anybody else? I don't see any raised hands. Chat is also silent. I think everybody is aiming for the lunch break. <laughs> All good. Thank you. <laughs> so, thanks a lot. And um, I think with that, we come also to the end of the morning sessions. And I would like to remind you all, there will be the 